coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned. Symposium message, FAA is open for business. Property Drone Consortium receives FAA waiver to fly at night. And NASA Armstrong successfully flies a new subscale aircraft. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned Program, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AUVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. During the third annual FAA UAS Symposium, co-sponsored by AUVSI, FAA officials said repeatedly that they want to talk to industry about ways to help companies achieve their goals, including for beyond line-of-sight flights and package delivery. The message of the whole conference is the FAA is open for business, said Derek Kahn, Undersecretary for Policy at the U.S. Department of Transportation, summing up the FAA's stance at the symposium. One key element to achieve such thing is an unmanned traffic management system, which NASA is working on, along with numerous industry and government partners. Our research will be completed by 2019, said Paramal Kopadekar, who is leading the UTM effort for NASA. NASA's work is divided into modular sections, so some functions can be rolled out before the whole effort is finished and turned over to industry to implement. Jay Merkel, a deputy vice president at the FAA's ATO, urged attendees, don't wait for UTM. We are all here ready to start moving you toward whatever you need under this paradigm. You just need to help us understand what you need and where you need it, and we will help you get there. In the next Unmanned Minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. A drone is considered the culprit in a wildfire that burned some 335 acres near Kendrick Park in the Coconino National Forest near Flagstaff, Arizona. The U.S. Forest Service said that last week, several firefighter crews responded to a smoke report from a drone in an area north of Flagstaff. The response included several Forest Service engines, patrols, and a water tender truck dispatched from the Summit Fire Department. The fire reportedly began due to a drone that caught fire upon landing. Drone Shield LTD, an Australian public company with substantial U.S. operations, has announced that it has received the first order for its recently introduced Drone Sentinel product. Drone Sentinel provides its users with a highly modular multi-method drone detection capability and includes and integrates radar, radio frequency, acoustic, thermal and optical sensor detection, like all the key technologically viable detection methods that currently exist. On March 1st, Moore County Sheriff's deputies were dispatched to a residence in Jackson Springs, North Carolina, in reference to a missing 11-year-old female. Sheriff deputies responded to the home and began their search. Moore County Sheriff's Office drone pilot Lt. Tim Davis arrived at the residence with a Matrice 210 drone and immediately launched it to search for the child. Within 15 minutes, a heat signature was observed in the wooded area approximately 100 yards from the residence across the highway, and the child located safely. A fleet of Shebel's Camcopter S-100 unmanned air systems were commissioned by MDA, a Maxar Technologies company, to fulfill a contract with an international customer. As a vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, the S-100 has a relatively small logistical footprint, which allows for flexible and rapid deployment. That was our Unmanned Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. The Property Drone Consortium, a collaboration that consists of insurance carriers, roofing industry leaders, and supporting enterprises, announced that it has been granted an FAA waiver, permitting it to conduct small UAS operations at night. We're pleased to have been granted this waiver, said Randall Ishikawa, newly elected president of the Property Drone Consortium. Flying at night allows for testing of various sensors and developing operating experience that could potentially come into play in post-catastrophic situations. The waiver requires adherence to a number of provisions, including using a visual observer, 
flying with anti-collision lighting on the platform, and flying in Class G airspace, as well as compliance with all other Part 107 provisions. The PDC sees benefits in nighttime use of small UAS for emergency management, said Brian Quarter, co-chair of the PDC. The ability to fly small UAS at night extends the number of properties that can be examined for damage in a given period of time, while minimizing potential risk for non-participants, allowing for quicker review of claims and issuing of a much-needed settlement check for distressed homeowners. The Subscale Research Lab at NASA's Armstrong Flight Research Center in California recently introduced a new addition to their fleet of miniature aircraft. The not-so-small Micro Cub is a Bill Hempel 60% scale Super Cub, modified by Armstrong to support engineering campaigns focused on the integration of UAS into the national airspace system. On January 18, 2018, Armstrong Subscale Research Lab team piloted the Micro Cub for its inaugural flight, successfully demonstrating the aircraft's airworthiness. This initial flight was intended to check the ground handling and flight characteristics of the aircraft, along with validating the command and control system, verifying the remote control only mechanism, setting the tuning for autopilot gain, performing engine runs, gauging fuel consumption, and testing stall speed. Though small in size, the Micro Cub is a powerful vehicle in the realm of small to mid sized UAS aircraft. Specifications of the vehicle include a 21-foot wingspan, a Piccolo autopilot guidance system, and a JetCat SPT-15 turboprop, a design only model aircraft fanatics can dream up. The successful maiden flight means the Micro Cub will undergo additional aircraft modifications to validate risk reduction technology. Eventually, this technology will be integrated onto other NASA UAS aircraft such as NASA Ames Sensor Integrated Environmental Remote Research Aircraft, Sierra B. Well, that's our program for this week. In addition to this program, our daily Airborne Unlimited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and tweet us. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. And more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned at auvsi.org and airborne-unmanned.net. We'll see you next week.